So, the Huawei P20 Pro recently launched here in Canada, and before it went on sale, I watched a ton of YouTube videos, I was super excited for it. But once I actually got the phone, I noticed that there was some things I did and didn't like about it, but there was a lot of little details that I just found were never covered in any of the videos that I watched. So I thought I would make this video to go over 20 key details that I found important in my personal life um, that I think everybody else should know about. Now, I should let you know I might sound a little bit whiny in this video, and again, not everything is negative here, but um, I just found that these were important enough to me that I would have wanted to know before I bought the phone. So at the end of the video, you can decide whether or not these are important or a big deal to you or not. So the first thing is the color. In Canada, all the carriers are just selling this plain black version. They don't get that cool purple one, which is super lame because that's a big selling feature of the phone, and it's on Huawei Canada's front page of their website. So that kind of sucks. The second thing is, I noticed that in some of the review videos that I watched, it came with its own clear gel case, kind of like this one. Um, in Canada, apparently that doesn't come with the phone either. Uh, they would probably rather sell you the $40 OtterBox case, so no free case in the box. Third thing is the camera bump. Um, it is huge. I ended up buying my own clear case, obviously, and even with that on, it barely sits flush with the camera. Um, and when you put it down, you can actually hear the camera hit the table, which is not very good. The number four is the fingerprint sensor, which I noticed is wicked fast. It's like instant. Now, when it comes to the notch, there's actually a few things to be aware of. I hate the notch, and that's just my personal opinion. So obviously I did that software trick where you can hide it. Um, but there's still three details that I really think everyone needs to know about. So the first is some apps, major apps like Snapchat and Instagram, don't work properly with the notch. So you have the black bar, but the image goes to the top of the screen, so it ends up hiding part of the image behind that black bar, which is a bit of a pain. Second, and this is something that a lot of people just don't think about, when you swipe down for notifications, you don't think about where you swipe from. Sometimes it's on the side, sometimes it's in the middle. Well, now with a notch, you have to kind of think about it and get ready for smudges on your front-facing camera until you learn to not swipe from the middle, because that's where the camera is. The third thing is, obviously because there's only so much room on the right side of the notch, some of the icons ended up on the left side, specifically the, you know, the cell icon and the Wi-Fi. Every other Android phone I've ever used, the top left is reserved for notifications, um, so I kept thinking I had notifications every time I looked down at my phone, and I had to remind myself over and over again, oh yeah, it's just part of this phone. Now that might seem like a small detail to some people, but again, none of these would be an issue if there was no notch in the first place. And the notch is super unnecessary, makes the phone asymmetrical, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, detail number eight, and something that I thought would be a big deal is the screen size. Some people are totally okay with a huge phone. I obviously am a small guy, I have small hands, I prefer a small phone, and this phone is very tall. Now it's easy to hold, like width-wise, but reaching the top of the screen is a bit difficult. What I didn't know, and it's really cool, and I've never seen this before, is Huawei basically you swipe across the navigation bar and it makes the screen a little bit smaller, goes down to the corner. So you can just use the phone in this like little screen mode, which is super cool. Now number nine is to do with custom launchers. I did see a couple people in some videos mention that it was giving them a hard time trying to use a custom launcher instead of the one that comes with the phone. I had the same issue as well, which is a problem. Uh, kept crashing and forcing me back to the Huawei launcher. What was interesting was this only lasted for about a day, and then my regular launcher started working fine. Um, so I guess maybe it just gave up on trying to convince me to use the Huawei launcher. Now, detail number 10 isn't necessarily particular to this phone, although it might be. Um, I've not used a phone with front-facing speakers as my regular phone, and I was super excited to have a phone with a front-facing speaker. Um, yes, it is louder and clearer than my previous phone with a bottom-firing speaker, by like a little bit, it's really not a big deal. This is just not worth deciding on a phone or not. Now, number 11 is actually something that I wasn't expecting. It's not normally on phones anymore. It's got a little notification light up at the top, which is super handy. Again, it's on my previous phone. I'm really happy that it's there. Now, I've actually had a couple of weird issues with certain apps, uh, which is a bit of a problem. First one being Snapseed, my main photo editing app, and this is a phone all about photos. The pinch, multi-touch, and the swiping gestures do not work very well at all on this phone, which is super annoying. I found myself editing on my old phone, the pictures I took on the new phone. Another app that doesn't work properly is Rocker Locker. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It basically, you can set it so that your volume buttons default to media instead of the notification volume. I've used it on a ton of other phones before. For some reason, doesn't work properly on this phone. 
Now, I can't really comment on the battery life because I didn't use it for very long and definitely not as like a daily driver. It was more just as a camera kind of thing. Uh, but I did notice that it takes forever to charge. Obviously the battery is humongous and so it takes a long time to charge. Now, yes, it has a fast charging cable and charger that comes with it. And that's great if that's what I'm using. But if I'm boring another charger, or if I'm in the car, anywhere else, if you need a quick top up, you've got to make sure you've got access to that fast charging thing. Again, it's more of an issue for this phone than other phones because the battery is so humongous. Now, speaking of the car, detail number 14 is my biggest issue with this phone, Android Auto. I am, uh, my life revolves around Android Auto. It's super important to me in my work. And I noticed issues right away plugging this in compared to any other phone that I use, my wife's phone, my friend's phones, everybody else things works. Um, for some reason, I went online and it seems like Huawei phones all seem to have this issue, which is a huge deal that all their phones have the same problems um, and they don't seem to want to solve them. The Bluetooth would connect and disconnect and reconnect randomly. The music would just not play even though the thing's going across the screen. And all of the issues that I experienced were all over the internet. Tons of other people had them, but not a single tech reviewer mentioned that. So obviously I guess tech reviewers don't really use Android Auto, but to me that was a huge deal because I have it in my vehicle and that's part of my job. So now finally, I want to talk about the main selling point of this phone, obviously the cameras, which are some parts amazing and some parts not so amazing. So detail number 15 is actually just the regular camera. If you just use this as 40 megapixel mode, no fun tricks or night modes or zooms or anything like that, just regular 40 megapixels, it's an amazing, amazing camera. The sensor size is humongous. So again, you have to specifically set it to 40 megapixels, but you get that depth of field where you get the bokeh behind the subject naturally because you don't need to use software trickery. It's actually an amazing camera. Um, and so that's obviously, and it's 40 megapixels, it's super sharp. So I just found that that's something that a lot of people probably didn't use. They would default to the 10 megapixels thing because you need that for all the other modes. But if you just use it in regular, it is amazing. By far the best camera thing that I've ever used, camera phone anyways. Now, if you do want to use the zoom, as I mentioned, you've got to kind of go down to the 10 megapixels. And the zoom, some parts amazing, some parts not so amazing. Same as the rest of this phone. So obviously you tap on the 3X box, you zoom in, um, it's quite low resolution that I found. So it's like, it's fine if you're just looking at it, but as soon as you pinch into that photo, it's, it's not super sharp. Um, also the focusing is terrible when you're using it in the zoom mode. I just found it took forever. If you're, if everything is kind of far away, you're zooming into something that's relatively flat, that's fine. But I would often use it on a subject with stuff far behind them to try and get that depth of field. And it would often miss focus. The thing is, once it does focus, and once you do get it, it is amazing. The depth of field is insane. Um, it is just a really cool effect. But again, I just found it was super hit and miss, um, especially to do with the focus, which is a big deal, especially if you're trying to get that effect where the background is blurred. So um, again, don't crop in too much on that. It's an eight megapixel zoomed camera, but it's in 10 megapixel mode. So obviously they're trying to do software trickery to make up two megapixels, which yeah, okay. Now detail 17 is about the front facing camera. I did see a lot of reviewers complain about that, this beauty mode issue where it softens the face. Now what I found is that if you're in auto mode and you switch it to the front facing camera, it doesn't go to auto mode for front facing camera. It seems to always, no matter what, jump to portrait mode for front facing camera. So there's an auto mode that's separate from portrait mode on the front facing camera. And I think as soon as you press the front facing, it just defaults to that mode. So I'm guessing that that's what reviewers are running into and that does blur your face like crazy, like over softens it. The regular photo mode, I found it would brighten the photo, um, maybe a little more than I wanted it to, when it sensed a face. So it would be normal and then a face would come into frame and it would brighten up like crazy. Um, so that's just kind of something to be aware of. It's not as terrible as everyone was saying. Again, I, I'm not buying this for the ultimate selfie shooter. I think there's other phones that might do a better job than that, but again, you're not framing selfies and putting them on your wall like that. I mean, maybe you are, maybe that's your thing. I'm not, so that's that was what I found with this phone. Anyways, for me, what was more important is manual mode, and that's detail number 18. Um, I found that even though it's great that it's here, the controls were super annoying. So when you're in manual mode, if you haven't adjusted anything yet, it shows what your settings are on the screen. So let's say it's, okay, for this scene, it's gonna be at 1 20th of a second. When you tap it, it doesn't show 1 20th on the dial, it shows auto on the dial, which is at the very bottom of the list. So if I'm at 1 20th and I wanna just switch it to 1 24th, 
I have to tap the button and then swipe all the way up to get to 124th, which is somewhere way in the middle of the menu and I gotta go find it. It should just stay at 120th and then I can swipe down and go, okay, 124th or 130th or whatever. Um, it doesn't default to where it should be. It's got this auto setting, which is way down at the bottom of the list. So because I ended up using manual mode way less, I ended up using auto mode way more. And the annoying thing is, is that when you're in auto mode, if you touch on something and you're like, okay, I want it to be brighter or darker. So I touch somewhere to focus, then I slide the slider up and down to set the brightness, take the picture, and then it defaults back to what the brightness was previously. So I had to do that every time, which was super annoying. There's no way to lock it in. And again, the manual mode, that annoying auto button, ugh, I couldn't figure that out. Okay, finally, detail number 20 is pretty much the best thing about this phone, and that is the night mode. It is insanely good. So basically, it's using technology similar to Google's HDR trickery that they use on their Pixel phones. Um, it's multiple exposures kind of stitched together into one shot. And what it seems to do, from what I can tell, is you take a picture that's usually relatively dark, and then it takes a whole bunch more photos and adds that information to the original exposure. So that's why you can do a four second exposure and it's not blurry because it's actually just taking a quick photo and then just using information from the rest of the photos from what I can tell anyways because the cool thing is it's not like a normal long exposure it's not just brightening everything like a four second exposure would because if that was the case then your highlights would be blown way out even though the shadows would be nice and clear so what it actually does is because it starts with that dark photo it just brightens the dark parts of the shot which is amazing so you end up with this very bright photo, but the highlights are still clear. They're not blown out. So I had some shots where it was like I was taking a picture of a friend in front of a skyscraper and the lights on the building, instead of being blown out, I could see into the building as if I was taking a super dark shot that was exposed just for those windows. Normally I found what it would do is it would shoot for about four seconds when I was handheld, but I did get it a couple of times to go into 15 second mode when I put it on a tripod. It seemed to sense when it was perfectly still. And the 15 second one was super clear, which was really cool. A couple times I found the 15 second was too bright, but what's amazing is the shutter button, when it's in that night mode and it's taking that long exposure, the shutter button becomes a stop button. So if it's 15 seconds, at 10 seconds, if it looks fine, you press that stop button and you're set. You don't need to go any brighter than that if it looks too artificial beyond that or whatever. So you actually have some ability to control that. There is manual settings within the night mode for ISO and shutter speed. But because it doesn't work normally, it was really confusing and I could never get it to look better than the auto mode. So I usually ended up just letting it do its thing and then if I wanted to stop it earlier, I would. So that's the 20 key details on the Huawei P20 Pro. I am actually gonna return the phone, uh, mainly because of the Android Auto issue. I hope this video helps people in making their decision on whether or not these are a big deal for them. Um, if you think I'm totally wrong or an absolute moron or you wanna argue with me for the fun of it, feel free to leave a comment on this video. That's cool. I uh, hope this helped. Thanks for watching.